3.9 practice problems. Which of the following techniques is most appropriate for the recovery of solid potassium nitrate from an aqueous solution of potassium nitrate? So if I want a solid, I'm going to need something that is going to separate this out. Uh, Filtration is not going to work since that is uh, since it's aqueous, it's going to just go straight through the filtration. Titration is uh, a means to identify the concentration of something. Paper chromatography is uh, going to tell the relative uh, polarity of the solution, not going to separate anything out. Electrolysis also not going to help. So my only option is going to be to evaporate it to dryness. On the basis of the solubility curves shown above, the greatest percentage of which compound can be recovered by cooling a saturated solution of that compound from 90 degrees to 30 degrees. So 30 degrees and 90 degrees. So we want the largest differential between uh, how much could be dissolved at 90 degrees versus how much could be dissolved at 30 degrees. You can see that uh, the potassium sulfate solution is approximately the same. The sodium chloride solution is approximately the same. The potassium uh, chromate solution is approximately the same. The uh, selenium sulfate solution is also approximately the same. The only one that has a very big difference between how much can be dissolved at 90 degrees versus 30 degrees is going to be potassium nitrate. So that's going to be the compound that would best be uh, precipitated out by decreasing the temperature from 90 to 30 degrees. The diagram above shows a thin layer chromatography uh, chromatogram of a mixture of products from a chemical reaction. The separation was performed using 50% ethyl acetate in hexane as the solvent, the mobile phase, and silica gel as the uh, polar stationary phase. On the basis of the chromatogram and the information about solvents in the table above, which of the following would, best, uh, would be the best way to decrease the distance that the products travel up the space? So um, we are going to be comparing relative polarities uh, dealing with the um, uh, uh, different uh, products that we are uh, separating out on the chromatogram. So we are uh, dealing with uh, ethyl acetate and hexane. And so the more ethyl acetate we have present in the uh, solvent, we are going to have a higher polarity. So if I want my products to not travel up as high, uh, you can see that they have traveled up pretty high, which means that they are relatively polar. I want to decrease the polarity of the uh, solvent, and so I'm going to decrease the percentage of the ethyl acetate that is in solution. A student obtains a liquid sample of green food coloring that is known to contain a mixture of two solid pigments, a blue and a yellow, dissolved within an aqueous solution of ethanol. Which of the following laboratory setups is most appropriate for the student to uh, use in order to separate and collect sub a substantial sample of each of the two pigments. Uh, so we are looking to uh, separate the two pigments. So we are going to want uh, something that is going to separate out those two pigments and also I want to uh, collect whatever pigments I'm going to receive. So uh, t this TLC situation is not going to allow me to collect any of the sample. Uh, a is not going to allow uh, separation. So between B and D are my only real options where I would be able to potentially uh, have a separation happening between my uh, two pigments. Uh, however, I don't know the different boiling temperatures of um, my 
uh, pigments, anything like that. And so the uh, slow drip down with this titration is going to be my best bet for uh, figuring out how to collect uh, the different pigments as they can separate within that uh, burette. A student performed a fractional distillation of a mixture of two straight chain hydrocarbons, C7H16 and C8H18. Using four clean dry flasks, a student collected the distillate over the volume ranges A, B, C, and D shown in the graph above. Over what volume ranges should the student collect the distillate of the compound with the stronger intermolecular force? So the stronger the intermolecular force, the uh, higher the boiling temperature of that compound is going to be uh, because we're going to have a relative stickiness between those uh, compounds. They're not going to want to change state as readily. And so the higher boiling point uh, step here is going to be whatever compound has a higher uh, intermolecular force, so option choice D is going to be my best bet. A mixture containing equal number of moles of ethyl acetate and butyl acetate is, uh, was separated using distillation. Based on the diagram shown above, which of the following identity, uh, identifies the substance that would be initially present in higher concentration in the distillate correctly explains and correctly explains why that uh, occurs. So the distillation is going to take place with the uh, less uh, sticky, the, the molecule that has a uh, lower amount of intermolecular forces coming out first, followed by the more sticky, the uh, molecule that's going to have a higher um, amount of intermolecular forces coming out second. So I am going to look for whoever is going to have a uh, larger uh, intermolecular force, and that is going to be who comes out second, which means that that is not who is going to uh, be the one that uh, is in a larger proportion in the first distillate. So uh, between ethyl acetate and butyl acetate, mm -hmm. Um, we have similar oxygen uh, positioning between the two. However, butyl acetate does have a longer carbon chain, which means that we are going to have larger London dispersion forces along with uh, my uh, polar interactions with the oxygen present. So since this is going to have a larger London dispersion. Uh, this means that that is going to come out second. So ethyl acetate should come out first. And um, that is because the ethyl acetate has a shorter carbon chain and therefore weaker London dispersion forces. And so it is going to boil out first. In paper chromatography experiment, a sample of a pigment is separated into two components, X and Y, as shown in the figure above. The surface of the paper is moderately polar. Uh, what can be concluded about X and Y based on the experimental results? So the uh, paper is going to be moderately polar and then um, our solvent is hexane, which is uh, very much nonpolar. So whatever is going to be uh, chasing up with the hexane is going to be the less polar compound. So uh, compound uh, X is going to be uh, much more nonpolar versus compound Y. So I'm going to look uh, for something that uh, reflects that. Uh, molar masses is not going to be the thing that determines how we uh, perform in a uh, chromatography experiment. Polarity is, and so uh, compound X is uh, going to be uh, less polar than compound Y. So compound Y being more polar than compound X is going to be the answer choice that I choose because compound Y is going to want to interact with that paper more. It's going to want to stick with that paper, whereas the compound X being 
nonpolar is going to chase up with the hexane, which is also nonpolar and isn't going to stick on the paper as much. So we are going to see a further separation between uh, X and Y since uh, X is going to be nonpolar.